Well, boys and girls, week three of the NFL season has come to a close. Now we get to look ahead to week four and see what's going to happen. Um, we learned a lot of interesting things this week. It's going to be really weird to see how some of these games play out because some of these games don't look as interesting as they did before over the next couple weeks. That's just how the NFL is. You never know what game you're going to get from some of these teams, you know. Um, sad to say, there's going to be some more injuries that, that are going to plague some teams. Unfortunately, start out on Thursday night, Christian McCaffrey got injured again. Um, I think he injured like his hamstring or something. Hopefully he gets well again soon. This man has been injury prone for a long time. You know, the running back position has a limited shelf life. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about, you know, Christian McCaffrey. Sam Darnold is continuing to ball out. Despite the fact that Davis Mills got the start for the Texans, Panthers were able to easily take care of business against the Texans. Now, Sunday, we got we got games of plenty on Sunday. I mean, my goodness, there were some wild finishes in the NFL this Sunday. You know, I mean, Chargers Chiefs, I mean, the Chiefs were turning the ball over at a crazy rate. Like, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire had a couple of fumbles, Patrick Mahomes had a couple picks, but the Chiefs were still in this game due to the Chargers being inept at times, you know, especially the second half when they could have put this game away. But, you know, at the very end of the day, you know, the Chargers were able to put up just enough points to keep the Chiefs away. And now the Chiefs are sitting at the bottom of the AFC West. Crazy. Insanity. I mean, this Chargers team could be 3-0. But, I mean, they played my Cowboys, and we'll talk about my Cowboys in a minute. But, um, this is really surprising. You know, Chiefs defense has been really suspect this year. Really, really suspect. You know, there are times, you know, in the Patrick Mahomes era where this Chiefs defense has been suspect, but this secondary got picked apart at times by Justin Herbert. Got picked apart, you know. I don't know if it's the run defense, I don't know if it's pass defense, but something's wrong overall with the Chiefs defense, man. And, you know, a game that I thought was going to be a little bit closer for a little while, I mean, considering we had Gus Johnson on the call, you know, we thought, you know, things could get even crazy. And things got crazy for just a little bit, just a little bit. The, the Jags got a big punt return touchdown, or was it a kick return? I always get the punt and kick returns confused by Agnew, and you know, Kyler had thrown a bad interception at one point, and the Jags were up like, what, 19 to, 19 to 14 at one point, or rather 19 to 10, excuse me, 19 to 10 at one point. I was watching a little bit of this game, and then quickly, as quick as could get, Kyler, you know, leads the cards down the field, and then Trevor Lawrence throws a pick. A pick six, boom, bing, bang. Cards take care of business against the Jags. We were good. I mean, I was gonna really roast the charge. I mean, not the charges, the Cardinals. If they lost to the Jags, that would have been really funny. If that actually happened. Um, now the Browns, man. Miles Garrett didn't have to do that to Justin Fields. Like that. I know Justin Fields is making what his first or second start. That is his first start. I'm, I'm always getting stuff wrong. First start for Justin Fields. And uh, and uh, Miles Garrett was just all over the field. We're talking, he had, what, five and a half sacks? Or was it five? It might have been five and a half. He had, I know he had four and a half at one point. The Bears' offense just could not get anything going. I mean, what, they had, what, 60-something yards of total offense? It's not going to get it done, man. Not going to get it done. I mean, that offense line is just not looking too good. I mean... The Bears' offense overall is just not looking too good. And Matt Nagy needs to get up out of Chicago. He needs to hurry up and get up out of there. Because, um, I mean, I don't know what's wrong with this Bears team. I mean, the defense is still there. I mean, you know, they were, I mean, the defense got after Baker Mayfield at times. But, it, I mean, at the end of the day, the Browns just overwhelmed the Bears. They, the Browns overwhelmed them to the point where it was just like, mm, man. How far are we going to see the, the Bears fall, man? How far are we going to see them fall? <sighs> Excuse me. Um, Bills, you know, took care of the football team pretty easily. Um, you know, it was like 21 to nothing at one point. Christian Washington tried to get back into it, 
but as soon as Taylor Heineke and company started, you know, not getting down the field, getting turnovers, and the Bills were able to capitalize off of everything and just take care of business. That's exactly what they did. In a divisional matchup, on the other hand, the Titans beat the Colts. I have no idea what happened in this game. I really don't. I, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. Like, the score is 25-16 in favor of the Titans, and it's just as everybody expected. The Titans in the lead in the AFC South, just as we expected from earlier this year. From, you know, a lot of people's predictions, you know. Um, Saints, they got they, they took care of the Patriots. I mean, pretty dominant defensive performance. Um, Patriots are one and two, you know. Now there's a big matchup. There's a big matchup looming for these Patriots next week. Um, I really don't know because I really haven't seen these Patriots play yet. So, you know, it's kind of surprising what which, which Saints team are we going to get, though. I'm trying to figure that out, too. You know, I mean, the Saints team played nice against the Patriots. They got smacked by the Panthers. So, uh, I, really, I really don't know, you know, what, what the Saints are. Congrats to the Falcons. They got their first win against the Giants. Oh, they retired Eli's, you know, they retired Eli's number. And there was still turnovers. How about some vintage Eli Manning for you? The splitting image, Daniel Jones, commit turnovers, you know, just as intended. And the Giants, what, 0-3 now? Gotta be feeling it. Gotta be feeling something. There, there, there's something wrong with the Giants organization. You know, the front office is, you know, beating up on trash cans and whatnot. And I mean, I, I don't know what's going on with the Giants. They need, they need to clean up house there. There's definitely a team that needs to clean up house. Now, this was very surprising. But then again, I, I'm not entirely sure if it was. And people have been saying it for weeks. I've been saying it for weeks at least. That the Steelers are lying. Just is not very good. They were they've been getting it rough out there. I mean, Big Ben's gotten sacked by the turf monster. I mean, this was just rough, man. The Bengals defense was out here, you know, making the Steelers look like fools. Joe Bur Joey Burrow was out here, you know, making plays, especially a pass to Jamar Chase. Like I said, that that LSU connection. And, and I mean, the Steelers, they're one and two now. What is going on out here? This, I mean, they got injuries galore as well. But I mean, Steelers have wanted two. You know, for a team that has a lot of high expectations, you know, to be wanted two is just kind of, uh, it, it's not a good look. Not a good look at all. And yes, we do have to talk about it. The 66 yarder made by Justin Tucker. By all accounts, he is the greatest kicker of all time. My goodness, man. Like, the Lions had this game. The Lions really had this game in the bag, I thought. You know, because, I mean, there was, just, there was just no way that somebody could make it from 66 yards. There was a 68-yard field goal that got missed earlier. And yet, here we are. 1917, man. Ravens over the Lions. Lions gotta be feeling sad right now. This is just a miserable team to be watching, man. I don't know how Lions fans deal with this every week. Like this is just really, really sad way to lose, man. Really sad way. Um, I know another team that's gonna be really sad. The Jets. They're 0 and 3. They're looking like they're picking right back up where they were last year. Hopefully they don't get like a little run, you know, like they did at the end of last year. So they're 0 and 3 now too. Um, overtime for uh, the Ravens. I mean, not the Raider. Yeah, not the. Uh, wow, I'm getting my words mixed up. The Raiders and the Dolphins went into overtime this past Sunday afternoon. Um, we're going into the late games now. And man, I, I really thought you know, I, I thought the I thought the Dolphins were done for for a hot minute. You know, because they were. Down with 25 to 14, and then Jacoby Brissett, you know, let him back, and boom, there you go. We, we went to overtime, and I'm sitting here like, how is this going to end? Because I mean, this game was a little bit crazy at the end. Because you know, so I was switching back and forth at, at at this point. You know, I had got to the end of uh, another game that I'll talk about here in a moment. 
But, uh, you know, I, I, I turned this game on, you know, for the last few minutes of it. And it, it's overtime. I was just sitting there like, man, the Raiders, I mean, the Raiders really are, what, 3-0, and man? This can't be real. The Raiders. And I realize I keep mixing up my names here. But the Las Vegas Raiders are 3-0. They look like a cohesive unit. My goodness, this this can't be real. They they keep giving us these close games that, that you know that are giving less Las Vegas fans heart attacks and stuff like that. And they keep giving us these thrillers. You know, mm, this is good stuff right here. This is a team that could you know, etch their name in stone. Could it be? Could it be for the Raiders? Could it be for them? Got a feel for the Dolphins though. Two is out for a little bit longer with that rib injury, I believe. But um, you know, hopefully he gets better, and uh, you know, hopefully the Dolphins try to recover. Because I mean, over times, you know, where the where the Dolphins had the Raiders, you know, right at the punch. But you know, at the very end of the day, you know, Raiders were just too much, especially you know taking pretty much the they they took the entire clocking overtime. They, they they had the ball like, what, five minutes or so left at overtime, and they just decided to take the ball all the way down the field, and instead of, you know, making the game shorter, <laughs> they decide to take it all the way down to zeros on the clock in overtime and win the, and win the game. That, that's how petty John Gruden is at times. Oh, how about those Rams? Oh, yes. The LA Rams, baby, they're three and oh two. Oh, they're a, they're a, they're a good team. I'm telling you, Matthew Stafford is out here thriving. The Bucks did not look too good. They were they were not they were not they were not in this game. This is similar to what happened last year with the uh, I believe, yeah it was the Packers that it was either it was either the Packers or the Saints last year that you know had the Bucks number. I can't remember which game it was, but this is similar to that. The Rams had a game plan and it was to give the ball to Cooper Cup. And the Stafford the Cup connection was just on point. This entire game, I swear Cup had like two or three touchdowns. I swear. And I mean the Bucks just could not get any momentum going. Like the Rams were up early and they kept Pounding away at the Bucks defense, you know the Bucks safeties have been getting have been hit with the injury bug at times, you know already this season, and they were just they just continued to get exploited by Cooper Cup. I don't know this guy was all over the field the entire game. Like, like oh, I was wondering, I'm just sitting here like, is anybody gonna stop him? Is anybody gonna stop Cooper Cup? Is anybody gonna do anything about that? Somebody? Nobody? Nobody. Nobody did anything about it. Um, Vikings have their first win of the season. That's really, really surprising. And the Seahawks are one and two now too. I, I really, I really don't know, man. I really don't know. So, I mean, they're sitting at the bottom of the NFC West. The Seahawks are. I mean, we know that the NFC West is competitive, but um, I, I didn't think it'd be like this. Like the Vikings. They knew what their game plan was against the Seahawks, too. You know, they knew what their game plan was, and that was, you know, keep Russ and company, you know, situated, keep them sitting on the sideline, you know, run the ball, chew clock, be a fiscal team, and, I mean, 30-17, to 17, that, that's, how the, that's how the score went. And, I mean, I'm sitting here, sitting here, I'm just sitting here wondering, you know, we, we got to get rid of somebody. We got to get rid of somebody for the Seahawks, man. And you all know who it is. It's Trey Flowers. Got to get rid of that man for the Seahawks, man. So, something's got to give. He was getting exploited all day long by the Vikings, you know. I mean, I'm just sitting here like, man, is anybody going anybody to stop Thielen? Is anybody going to stop anybody? You know, no, nothing. I mean, get that guy out of here, man. He, it's looking like Kevin King out there. Get him out of here too. Um, speaking of the Packers, they they beat the 49ers off of a late field goal for Mason Crosby as well. But I mean, I, I don't know how Aaron Rodgers did it with what 30 seconds left to go. 
I don't know how they got downfield and got that field goal, but I mean, uh, I, I just genuinely don't know, man. I, I was watching this game in conjunction with the Extreme Rules, by the way, so um, uh, I was mostly watching the Extreme Rules. Um, the, the, this Packers 49ers game really, it was kind of rough for a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, there was ref ball all over the place as usual. I mean, let me go, let me go back. To, let me go back to something here real quick. Hold on. Okay, so there was like a play at some point during the 49ers Packers game, in which I don't know what in the world happened, but there was some ref ball involved. There was also some ref ball involved later as well. I mean, I, I, I'm just sitting here like, what what is going on? Like, it felt like the Packers should have won this game easily the way it was going. And yet the 49ers were able to stay in it with Jimmy G. I mean, including the fact that, you know, this man threw the ball like backwards or whatever and turned it over on his own. And I mean, I'm just sitting there like, my goodness. Put in Trey Lance. You know, that's what a lot of people were saying on, on the social medias. Put in Trey Lance. And, you know, Trey Lance was in this game for like a little bit, but there was some just bizarre plays ran in front of 49ers. 49ers are going to be weird to watch this year, man. Gonna be a weird team to watch because I mean I just don't know, man. There, there's still, there's still a quarterback controversy there. It's still, it's still there, and I don't, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I, I really thought you know the 49ers were gonna have a little bit of a resurgence. You know, go back to, you know, go back to that team that went all the way to the Super Bowl. That just hasn't happened. You know. You know, they, they, they played well against the Packers in the second half, but that first half was just atrocious. Pretty atrocious. Speaking of atrocious, to finish out this video, let's talk about my Dallas Cowboys. Whew, boy, it feels like the, I, I can't even be happy about this beatdown that we gave the Eagles because it feels like we should have won by more. You know, it feels like we should have won by more. Mike McCarthy's still doing Mike McCarthy things. You know, we're still making mistakes, you know, at, at, at times, and I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know what this Cowboys team, what their real potential is just yet. Because, um, I mean, they did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the defending Super Bowl champs, but they still lost at the end, you know. There's there's something we got to fix right there. Giving the ball back with, like, 30 seconds left to go, and, you know, you have quarterbacks that are elite, like super elite driving down the field and getting the game when he feels oh, I, I don't I don't think I want that anymore can we not have that because that's start, that is starting to get a little bit predictable that has gotten a little bit predictable at times you know uh, but yeah uh, the Eagles obviously that performance against the Falcons was all a show because they did not look very good tonight we're talking Jalen Hurts committed a couple turnovers you know and the Eagles had turned it over the season by this point. And they they turned it over a couple times tonight. Uh, uh, like people, people were saying, oh, this Eagles defense, this, this defense is hard hitting. Well, I said that too. But th I said this Eagles defense was a hard hitting defense based on that Atlanta game. But they didn't look very. They didn't look like a hard hitting defense tonight. They did not look like that at all. They looked soft. Like Dak was exploiting that defense. You know, one two punch, two of, as well. And I mean, I'm just sitting here like, it, don't tell me the Cowboys are going to run away with the NFC East because, I mean, the Giants don't look good. They're 0-3. Washington's 1-2. The Eagles are 1-2. Uh, I mean, don't don't get my hopes up right now, please. I'm, I'm not ready for that. I'm not ready for that this early into the year. It's only, it's only for to be October, you know? I'm not ready for that. We don't. And the Cowboys don't play the rest of their NFC East opponents until, you know, late to the season, you know. Like the last, what, four or five games of the season are against NFC East opponents. So we'll have like a game against the Giants and then, you know, wait, wait it out for a couple months. And then, you know, we'll get to the rest of the NFC East to see, you know, what in the world's going on there. But, I mean, other than that, you know, I, I genuinely don't know because the rest of the NFC East has their problems as well. Uh, I'm still kind of shaky at times, like with the Cowboys, but I mean, a pick six, you know, helped. But things like, you know, you know, things like that help. You know, Dak playing well, looking like 
the DAC of old, uh, hell, even looking even better than the DAC Prescott of old out there on that field. You know, defense has been getting turnovers all season long for the Cowboys, and I, I'm just sitting here like, but the same, but at the same time, you know, there's things like the these things like Greg Zerline still missing kicks, still, and Mike McCarthy being, you know, Mike McCarthy, just not being a uh, a genius IQ coach, you know, and I, I, I just genuinely don't know, either, both of these teams, you know, have some issues, you know, so this beatdown really showed us a lot tonight, it really showed us a lot. Um, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Some, some of these games, you know, this week have shown us, you know, there's, there's gonna be a, we it's gonna be a weird year in the NFL. I can guarantee you that, you know, a lot of teams are jinxing each other right now. I mean, there's big matchups slated for next week that are going to rock our socks off, you know, and it, these were matchups that weren't really, you know, supposed to be as big as they were, you know, you know, before the season started, but like now. Steelers don't look like a team to be, you know, putting your money on because they, 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 they this, the Steelers just don't look good at all. At all, they don't look good at all. Eagles don't look good at all. Patriots are kind of iffy, you know. Dolphins, they they got injuries, you know. They still got Savy and Howard, but they got injuries. And, and the Seahawks are Seahawks and the Chiefs are at the bottom of both of their divisions. I don't know what's going on, man. The NFL is mind blowing me in a way this year that hasn't really mind blown me in a while, man. I'm excited. Talk about week four very, very soon. I'll see you guys in the next video.